boxing isn't all about the well-known headlines, about Canelo, Tyson Fury, or the Paul brothers. If you're a regular fight fan, then you'll agree that the true love for boxing also entails keeping up with the fights that aren't as popular. This is certainly the case for the upcoming fight between Jonathan Gonzalez from Puerto Rico and Gerardo Zapata from Nicaragua. Not only are both fighters extremely entertaining and skilled, but they also represent the continuation of underrated national boxing traditions in their countries. This will be the third WBO Junior Flightweight title defense for Gonzalez, an impressive feat already. They're set to go head-to-head, -head, and this is where we tell you everything you need to know about them. Let's go. La Bomba Jonathan Gonzalez, like many other successful professional boxers, come from a family deeply invested in the art. His father was also a boxer and got him into training from the age of four. Having decided quite early on that boxing was what he was meant to do, he began training under the wing of famed Puerto Rican coach Orlando Pinedo. In November 2008, Pinedo spoke about the dedication that Gonzalez invested during workouts, claiming that as an amateur, he had been able to knock out professionals during sparring. 2008 also happened to be the same year which he stashed the gold medal in the 51-kilogram category at the World Youth Boxing Championships, held in Mexico. Charting a path through for the sport in Puerto Rico, he became the fifth-ever Puerto Rican to claim such a victory. What really cemented his reputation as a deceptively powerful puncher for his size was the fight he had against fellow Puerto Rican McWilliams Arroyo in 2009, who was also slightly taller than him. This was the final showdown in a tournament featuring the very best of Puerto Rico. Before the fight, Former Olympic boxer and by then, one of Puerto Rico's most respected professional boxers, Juan Manuel Lopez, had this to say. McWilliams is my friend and I appreciate him, but Jonathan hits like a mule and looks very good. Just because he has become an amateur and they're giving him a scholarship doesn't mean that he has a secure position in the league. Although he has the advantage and experience, that fight is going to be very tough. His deceptively fast movements, combined with efficient power punching, took him through a victory against the formidable Williams Arroyo in the final round, ending in an 11-5 point spread. Keep in mind that Jonathan Gonzalez was still fighting as an amateur. His coach's words were proven true, as McWilliams Arroyo would himself start a rather successful professional boxing career right after the tournament. Either way, Gonzalez continued his amateur boxing career for another year, and he continued to display an evolving fight game with the power punching as a staple. His talents allowed him to secure yet another gold medal in his weight class. This was at the Ultimate Amateur Boxing event, representing his native Puerto Rico at the 2010 Central American and Caribbean Games in its boxing section. With more than enough accolades as an amateur, including the satisfaction of having represented Puerto Rico internationally in the fight game in honor of his late mother, he went pro in 2011. Jonathan Gonzalez made his professional boxing debut fighting none other than, well, a fellow named Jonathan Gonzalez at the age of 19 on April 1, 2011. We're sure it was quite the comic situation for everyone involved. But that didn't stop Labamba from defeating his name twin via TKO. I was confused. Did he win or did I? He recounted. Either way, the climb ahead would prove to be rather strenuous and a lengthy procedure, having had to fight for several local and regional level WBO championship titles. These fights were against Erickson Martel twice, Carlos Ruben Dario Ruiz, and Juan Alejo. These fights count among some of the best performances ever put on by Jonathan Gonzalez, and the way he played his opponent's momentum against them with slick footwork was a sight to behold each time. He would only have his first world title fight at the age of 28 on August 24, 2019, after 26 professional fights, against Kosei Tanaka for the WBO title in Japan. Eight years in the making, but lost to Tanaka via a seventh-round TKO. But this was not much for the Puerto Rican, and he took out the Mexican Edwin Soto in 2021 to secure the much-vaunted global WBO flightweight belt. He would go on to defend his title twice in June 2022, first against Filipino warrior Mark Anthony Bariga, and then the formidable Shokichi Iwata on the 1st of November. An impressive feat, considering how sharp the stakes are during a title defense. A year's now passed, and the stakes are sharper than ever before. El Cascabel's Flame Hailing from the small Nicaraguan town of Masaya, Gerardo Zapata is a comparatively newcomer to the sport, having had his first and only amateur fight on record in 2017. This was during the 2017 AMBC, American Boxing Continental Championships. He went pro the very next year, representing a rather fast transition from beginning and going pro. You'd think it was a bit too early for him to be going pro, and that he'd be chewed and spat out, not seeing much success. Well, the naysayers couldn't have been more wrong, 
As he started to rack up victory after victory, he couldn't be stopped. With some nasty knockout victories scored against Erickson Mauricio Lindo and Juan Gonzalez in 2018, showing just how much of a danger he can be on the canvas. A record that's nothing short of impressive followed from that point on, and he suffered his only professional loss in 2022. That, too, through a disqualification. He was disqualified on account of a punch to the back of the head of his opponent, which was correctly noted by the judges to be potentially very dangerous. As unfortunate as it was, it was also sad that this was a title fight for the WBO Latino Light Flightweight Champion. As quickly as Zapata came onto the scene and smashed his way through the competition to finally hold the championship title, all it took was one unfortunate move to have it taken away. El Cascabel's spears were dampened quite a bit, something that many would say was evident in his next fight against Isaiah VR for a WA title. It ended in a draw, which was closely contested from the get-go. Zapata was not happy about it and still believes that VR had a hometown advantage with the match being held in Panama. Nevertheless, he's been placed on the track to fight his biggest challenge up to this point. A world title will be his for the first time if he can handle and defuse La Bamba. Unfortunately, we'd like to tell you a lot more about this intriguing Nicaraguan, but he hasn't been picked up by the English-speaking media for interviews and discussions. The vast majority of the media regarding his career, early life, and motivations for boxing are all in Spanish. Given the fact that this man rapidly moved to pro and began dominating from the get-go after just one amateur fight that he lost, it's quite a shame. This is all the more impressive when you consider his age. He started boxing competitively at a comparatively much older age compared to other professional boxers. Hopefully, this upcoming world title fight will let us know more about his life. Either way, we can tell you that the meaning of his name likely has to do with the Latin American Cascabel Chile, which is small in size, but still packs a lot of heat. Thinking about Zapata's short stature and the way he pummels his opponents, we don't think there could be a better nickname for him, styles compared, and who could win. The lighter weight classes are as exciting as the heavier ones, if not more. And of course, watching boxers fight before they reach world championship status is at the heart of enjoying the sport. Standing at 5'2", Jonathan Gonzalez packs a surprising amount of muscle in his frame, honed through countless hours of drilling. My secret is my discipline, he claimed in an interview. Indeed, fighting for so long and maintaining a record like his is no small feat. As we've stated before, Gonzalez punches like a mule, becoming known as a deceptively powerful puncher for his size. He's careful to not build an over-reliance on punching hard and being aggressive, though. And he has proven time and time again that he can strategically draw a fight for as long as necessary against trickier foes. This was on full display in his most recent fight with Filipino challenger Mark Anthony Bariga who uses his southpaw stance to outbox his opponents and breach their defenses. Of course, Gonzalez himself is a southpaw, so it makes sense for him to know. Gonzalez also displays a masterful ability to change strategies and adapt, depending on the way his opponents fight. Again, this was seen in his fight against the Japanese Shokichi Iwata, where he alternated between staying on the outside and inside, and either going fully aggressive or playing it safe trying to catch the opponent in counters. On the other hand, Gerardo Zapata stands slightly taller than him at 5'4", which is ironic considering his ring name. His reach and hard-punching power combined with excellent endurance ensured his dominant rise to his title contentions. Fighting Southpaw, he has a game plan that's quite similar to that of Gonzalez if you think about it. But an argument can be made that he doesn't have the strategic and patient mind that Gonzalez has, which is honed by years' worth of experience ahead of him. His unfortunate foul move, leading to disqualification in the fight against Isaiah VR can indeed be taken as a display of this. My team and I have seen the tape on him, Zapata. We are ready and eager to get back in the ring, noted Gonzalez, as he feels confident in his years of experience to deliver him a victory. We saw Zapata as a southpaw, but he brings nothing new to the table. On October 27th, Bamba will still be WBO champion. But the Cascabel is hungry for the title after his last two fights and he wouldn't want to disappoint his fellow Nicaraguans as the fight is going down in his home territory. Destiny has placed me here, states Zapata. I won my last fight. VR got a hometown decision, which cost me the fight with Gonzalez. But here we are, and I would not disappoint my people. With such steely motivation and a clear height advantage over Gonzalez, this fight is said to be very close and hard fought. Are you excited to see Gonzalez defend his title for the third time? Leave us a like and subscribe if you agree with our assessment of this showdown. We'll see you again when the dust settles on the canvas.